Hello and welcome back to the video here on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get a DNA bomb in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. It has been a new addition to the Season 4 update for Modern Warfare 3 and it absolutely is amazing. It brings the nostalgia back to Call of Duty to where killstreaks can in fact get you a nuke reward. Now getting it can be done in a lot of different ways when it comes to playing the game. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the best strategies to get it along with some of the best settings to use when it comes to playing the game. So with further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. So getting right into it, everything on screen right now are in fact things we're going to go over in this video. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get better at playing the game, understanding routes and many other things while also understanding the killstreak system a lot better with what I would personally recommend to use for certain situations. Now with the introduction of the DNA bomb coming into the game it is one thing to keep in mind that you can get a DNA bomb while only using killstreaks. The score streak system will not let you get a DNA bomb, but with the kill streaks, you most certainly can. And one thing that I really do enjoy is that the kill streaks do chain like traditional Call of Duty, such as in Ghost, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, and many other Call of Duties. So getting right into it, we're going to try to figure out what your positives and negatives are. It can be different for a lot of people, but for some, it can be a very easy fix, while others, it can take a little bit more practice to get a little bit of a better grip on what you're dealing with. So right now, we're going to go through an in-game step-by-step on what are some of the best settings to use when it comes to playing the game. Now, we're going to go over sensitivity and aim assist and a lot of other things within the setting menu to help you as the player, but also a lot of other settings such as interface settings as well that can help you see things a lot better in the game as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? All right, so getting right into it, we're gonna go into the settings and basically I want you to copy all the settings I have. These settings were given to me by someone in my stream a handful of months ago and these settings have improved my accuracy and many other things. Now, of course, these are just going to be just a sensitivity and interface type of things. We're not going to go into detail with graphic settings because that can be different for everybody. We're just going to go over to sensitivity and interface. All right, so I'm just going to scroll down the list and I'm going to do a brief introduction and brief description on why things are the way they are. All you got to do is just pause the video if I'm going too fast and just copy the settings. Now, I do play on a PlayStation 4 controller. I have always played on the PS4 controller with this play style, but of course, many other play styles can also be played. For me personally, I can't really play with a scuff since they're a little bit too expensive for my liking, and I just really enjoy the default controller type vibes, so I kind of stick with it. So, aiming input device is controller, button layout is this right here. I got bumper ping off. I got flip L2 and L1, R1 and R2 to where I can shoot with R1 and L1 buttons and stuff like that. Stick layout default, controller vibration always off. That tends to mess me up a lot. Dead zone inputs, here are my dead zone inputs right here. Go ahead and copy them. These are pretty decent. Um, you would most likely want your right stick down to three, but five is just fine. You want zero for left stick min, left stick max is 60, right stick min is five or three, right stick max is 99, left trigger 13, right trigger 13. Now you can play around with the right trigger and left trigger. You could turn them down a bit if you'd like to. Um, it's all really based off preference. And if you do have a lazy analog, your right stick will get messed up a lot the lower you put this at. So I'd recommend 5 being a very comfortable ground to where your lazy analog doesn't really mess with you that much. But if you don't have one, that's totally fine. You can still use this and you'll do pretty well. So we're going to go to aiming. So I've played on 2020 in max sensitivity my whole Call of Duty career. I've always enjoyed it. Besides for Advanced Warfare, I played on a little bit of lower one for some reason. I just couldn't really click with that game. But with this game, I've lowered my sensitivity down to 8.8. Eight. It works really well for me. I'd personally recommend 
either increasing or decreasing your sensitivity to where you're in that comfortable area to where you can actually hit your shots and many other things like that because accuracy is key when it comes to playing the game. ADS sensitivity multiplier, you want this at 0.65, but of course, if you're going to be sniping and or even using a high zoom, you can increase this to 70, 75, 80, 85. You just have to play around with that middle ground a bit. I've noticed 65 works very well, but I've also noticed that using a sniper rifle, I tend to struggle a lot with the sensitivity setup, which is totally fine. Sensitivity multiplier. I kind of got this all a little messed up. Um, I shouldn't have that at two. I just have all these at default right here. Shouldn't really be an issue. All these are just default at one. Vertical aim axis. I got all these as standard, um, but of course, if you play a certain way, by all means you can invert them tactical stance sensitivity i got it at one but you can also decrease it around the area of which that you are using with your original settings right up here for ads sensitivity multiplier my aim response curve type is dynamic and the aim response curve slope scale is one standard linear i think linear got a nerf a little while ago because people use linear in black ops but i know dynamic works really well for me but of course this is kind of preference based really so if you don't like dynamic you can always use linear or standard just play a few games switch it out and see what works best for you for me personally i know dynamic works really well ads sense multiplier focus i got this at one ads sensitivity transition timing i got it as instant instant's probably the best because when you ads in and out you can get a feel for how the game kind of moves and functions and instant works phenomenal custom sensitivity per zoom now if you want to get better when it comes to you know using sniper rifles or scoped weapons this is where you want to mess around with your settings at and fine tune it this is actually something i'm going to have to do a little later go to a uh, private match and just move my analog around just to find that comfortable area for my sniper or high zoomed weapon to operate with and this is a setting of which that you can do that in for me i got it off but i'd recommend having it on to where you can tweak these on the fly you want your target aim assist on if you are playing on controller but of course if you're playing on pc you're not going to have it on and none of these controller settings are going to play a part for you now unfortunately i don't really know that much about pc settings so i do apologize about that aim assist type i got it as default i know a while back black ops used to be the one you go to but this did get nerfed a few seasons ago so i just avoided that and i just i just rock default third person precision ads type i use precision um seems to work in third person game modes motion sensor behavior i got that off motion sensor advanced settings i have not really messed with any of these so i just don't even touch them since i got it off so over here to gameplay i got automatic sprint off of course some people do play with it on if you do that's totally fine but i know for me automatic tack sprint can ruin reload cancels and it can also mess around with some maneuverability around the map um but but having automatic sprint on can in fact help the longevity of your analog so if you do use it by all means it's totally okay but if not this is what i rock it's totally cool sprint tactical sprint behavior i do it as toggle to where you can you know activate if you want to do your tactical sprint or not this helps out a lot for some people you know by all means you can hold it you can toggle it it's just all about your personal play style for me i try to avoid things to where i got a hold to where i can react very fast fast to different scenarios auto move forward i got that off of course similar to the automatic tax sprint you really don't need that tactical sprint behavior i recommend double tapping it instead of single tap and everything like that because the double tap can give it its own personal setting to where you know how to activate it and deactivate it ground mantle off automatic airborne mantle off this thing can really screw you over in gunfights the amount of times i would jump next to something and just mantle it in the middle of a gunfight would fry my brain automatic grand mantling i would turn that off as well you basically want as many things off that is going to affect your gameplay when it comes to automatic behavior slide dive behavior tap the slide 
The reason why is after we do this, I'm going to teach you guys how to slide cancel and how to do it very, very well. I'm going to do it with a hand cam in the top right corner to where you guys can see how I'm doing it. Plunge underwater, trigger, parachute free fall, sprinting, door dash on to where you sprint into a door and it slams it open. Or it can also um, slam it the other direction. That does help out, especially with Warzone and a few other game modes to where you can finesse the doors a bit and work them to your advantage. Ledge climbing behavior, mantle only, but you can change movement based. So that does help, but I'm, I don't really mind the mantle only. Um, aim down sight behavior, hold. Hold, change zoom activation sprint as tactile sprint focus i got that on um hold hold ads melee for weapon mount um if you have it on ads it's going to mess you up double tap ads is going to mess you up so that's just something to keep in mind ads and melee you're not really going to be hitting that duo together other than just doing this weapon mount exit delay medium but you can change it to whatever you'd like based off preference tactical stance activation ads and down button this can mess some people up, so you can move it around a bit because it does mess me up sometimes when I call on kill streaks. Tactical stance behavior on, interact reload behavior, tap to interact. So this is something that can be universal when it comes to multiplayer and in fact Warzone. This right here is very nice, especially if you're on a kill streak and you're in your spawn and you're gunning and you run out of ammo, but you see there's ground weapons near you. You press square once, you pick up the gun, double tap triangle to get rid of the animation, and then you're right ready to get right into that gunfight. Armor plate behavior, apply all. I like that. Some people don't. They like to apply one at a time, but I just like to apply all just in case if you get in a situation for Warzone to where, you know, you need plenty plates instead of just doing one you fill up until you can't fill up no more backpack control directional buttons but of course you can use your stick stick will probably be better but i like the directional buttons i don't really mind it ads interruption behavior under interrupt can even mess with that for some reason depleted ammo weapon switch this does cost you sometimes but it also does help you it's one of the one settings where it's a little iffy but it's an okay one quick c4 detonation grouped um, I might do, I've, I've been having an issue with this. One by one is the way to go for the C4 detonation. It's, it's not bad because you could double tap square and activate them or activate the charge. I've actually been looking for this setting, so I just fixed it. Manual fire behavior, press. A Kimbo behavior independent. Now this is one of them settings to where you can use to your advantage when it comes to running around with the Kimbo weapons. Um, paired is where they both shoot at the same time. Independent is when they don't really shoot at the same time you can do each individual one um paired is pretty cool especially for the models to where you can get two shots off at once but a lot of the times from what i've noticed in previous call of duty titles is if you have them as independent you can shoot each one after another left and right or right and left and it can basically output more damage kind of not really though it's literally just based off preference um vehicle camera recenter short delay free look um lean out activation melee scoreboard map stats behavior toggle ping will delay moderate um i've been having an issue with this as well too so i might mess around with this setting personally when i get into a private match and see what works for me double tap danger ping now this is the one i was having issues with right here put it as short probably put this one as short as well will's behavior not really sure what that is oh the kill streak will uh i'll do hold that does help out a lot so now since that's basically the controller settings let's go to interface real quick so under interface these are things i don't want you to do hud boundaries click on this and make this as small as you can get it it'll put your mini map and everything else closer toward the center of your screen to where you can get a little bit of a better look at your mini map while you're playing the game your mini map is your best friend in this game if you learn how to finesse your mini map you're chilling mini map shape make it a square as you can see from the two examples square you can see a whole lot more of the map other than just a circle mini map rotation on always had this on horizontal compass this is very useful it was extremely useful in vanguard equipped with um a perk that let you see enemy spawn locations but in this game it doesn't really do that but it is very useful for when it comes to understanding enemy positioning on the map for their direction crosshairs on hit marker visuals on damage based hit but markers on you want that to where you can see if you get headshots or not player names full in game text on vehicle hud prompts fade squad health and stamina on Telemetry. So this is like more of a PC setting. Um, you just really want to know your frames per second, your latency, your packet loss, and many other settings that you'd like to see. Gameplay tips off. They just 
a really distracting um, introduction movie. Um, I've actually been wondering why my hasn't been playing, but I'm going to turn this on. I think it's a really cool little feature. Tool tips on. They, they are pretty useful every so often. Menu prompts controller. Of course, that is your input-based device. So there's that. Then you want to go to color customization. Click on this. Now, this is where everything is going to come to your personal interaction base, right? I like these colors right here because they're very bright and subtle and I could tell the difference between a lot of things. But as you've probably seen with a lot of other Call of Duty creators, people have actually done green for enemy names and hit markers and stuff like that, which is cool. People's done purple, people's done pink and many other things. It's all based on what you prefer. So this is a setting of which I'd recommend playing around with to where you can figure out something that works really well for you. For me, I really do like the aesthetic of having like the red for enemy, green for party, blue for, you know, enemies and yellow for me to where I can tell the difference between a lot of things on a mini map. Because when I play the game, I look at my mini map probably 80% of the time. So that's something I would in fact recommend. And of course you could do color filters to add to your settings, like your game. Like as you can see, it changed colors. These are like colorblind settings. Um, these are things that you can mess around with to give some texture and color to your game. All right, here's also color blind settings as well. Um, there's that. Then we're going to go over to graphics. You want to go to view. You want your field of view at 110. The higher you have your field of view, the higher your game's going to be processed on. And basically, the lower your frames or your field of view, you're going to get better response times. ADS field of view, I'd have it as affected. Weapon field of view, wide. Third person field of view, 90. Vehicle field of view, wide. World motion blur, off. Don't use these. These will literally cost you in so many gunfights, you will not see people. Film grain at 25% or a little lower. First person camera movement, 50%, 50% for third person camera movement. Third person ADS transition, third person ADS. Spectator camera, helmet or game perspective. I like the helmet, it's a very unique one. Um, inverted flashbang, so I've actually been wanting to use this since that white flash does mess with my head a little bit. So we're gonna turn that on and then Let's see here if there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else that we need to go over. So that's basically all the settings. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to slide cancel. So here we are right here, right? So the way that you slide cancel is with the settings I just gave you. You'd sprint slide and tap it again. I'm actually going to, so you'll, right? You'll slide like that. But what you can do though is you can slide and I play stick and move, so I jump with R3, as you can see right here. So I slide, double tap it. Slide, double tap your jump button. Regardless if X is your jump button or R3 is your jump button, slide, double tap it. Slide, double tap it. And the thing is, with playing the game, you can input these settings right here. You can slide and jump, slide and jump. It's all about an input base. So you can slide cancel. So you sprint, slide, do that, slip, do that. You only got to click it once, right? And the more that you get used to it, you can incorporate it into your gameplay, right? Like this or like that. It's, it's all preference based really, right? But of course, playing stick and move, your right analog, as you can see, I got a lazy analog. That's one downside to it, right? That's, that's how you can slide cancel you can slide cancel with your traditional circle button like this you slide double tap it slide double tap it right or you can slide double tap jump whichever one you prefer i'd like to jump one better right but it's different for everybody but that's how you slide cancel hopefully these settings did in fact improve the quality of your gameplay a lot because they did to mine, and I know most certainly they will to yours. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to break down meta and recoil patterns. These two things are very important, especially since every single weapon in the game that you will ever play in any Call of Duty, any franchise, or anything will in fact have a recoil pattern. Now, here we got the Holger 556 with the conversion kit. We're going to do two things. I'm going to let it get shot first 
with no analog assistance to where you guys can see the recoil pattern that I'm going to show you guys with the webcam what I do personally to control and mitigate that recoil so we're going to do it right here against this wall now I'm going to do it next to my head to where you guys can tell I'm not altering it anything whatsoever. So there's 100 rounds in this magazine, so let's go ahead and empty the whole thing. So as you can see, it just came out, right? It went up. Now what we're going to do is, since I aim at my right analog, when I start shooting, I hold down just a little bit. And you see what that little bit does? It can mitigate and lower that recoil tremendously. Understanding the recoil pattern of your gun, you can anti the recoil. So for this one, it's just straight up. So you just gotta hold it down, and you might need to like move it in a different direction or something like that to counter the direction that's going in. And it could just be just a little bit. And this is where your dead zone settings and a lot of other things come into play as well. So down on your analog as you guys can see zero to almost no recoil and this works for every gun in the game so here we're going to do the conversion kit for this weapon right here which is basically the groza so as you can see i'm shooting it straight up right so now since we have an understanding on how the recoil pattern works we're going to aim shoot, aim, shoot, aim, shoot. See? Putting a little bit of pressure on the analog can, in fact, decrease the amount of recoil that you get visually and in-game. So we're going to do one more weapon together. We're going to go ahead and do the new submachine gun, Super 346. Right? So this one right here, just like the other two, the recoil goes up and to the right. And of course, if you want to get a, another read for the recoil, let the magazine run through just to see a little bit of an understanding on how to operate. So it goes up and to the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim, ADS, and then when we, you know, hold down, since we know that goes up and right, we're going to move the analog a little bit to the left as well. Try to keep it centered, and as you can see, it's almost... It's almost centered. Okay. Of course, mid to long range on certain weapons, it can work, right? And the attachments that you use and everything else like that can also lower the amount of recoil that you get in the game. Now, when it comes to understanding metas and other things like that, you can actually go to the Call of Duty website and look at their patch notes. Or you can watch YouTube videos of trending classes and weapons that are trending within the community. One of the two will in fact give you meta weapons. Now, YouTube will in fact give you meta class setups for creators that have already made them. I know a lot of people, such as myself, don't like following meta trends because they do get pretty boring really fast. So I personally like to run around with weapons and other things to try to figure out what works for me. But by all means, if you want to try to get the strongest weapon in the game and, you know, strongest class and everything like that, by all means, look at the patch notes and look at the content creators within the scene who are making videos on these weapons. These people will have some valid resources and they will give you some really good class setups. That's what I would personally recommend. All right, so in this segment, we're going to be learning map surroundings and understanding spawn patterns. Just like in any Call of Duty, there has been these two things that literally make or break the game or map for you. The more knowledge you have, the better of a chance that you're going to be able to outsmart or even outplay or outgun your enemies in your gunfights. So right behind us is the newest version of Shipment. Everyone knows what this map is. This map has been overplayed and it is a really fun map in my opinion. We're going to be putting scenarios on screen on what you can do as a player to outsmart your opponents. Now, when it comes to understanding a lot of things, one thing I would really recommend is if you are a novice player, if you're a mid-tier player, if you're an experienced or if you're, you know, you're, you're a godly player, 
I would recommend that you take time to understand the type of maps that you're playing, objects you can shoot through, angles you can get on certain positions, what power positions are, what rotations when it comes to spawns you can maneuver, how to finesse the spawn locations, and many other things from there and in between. Now there's a lot of things I can factor these, such as game modes, Certain game modes has certain spawn points. For instance, with hard points, wherever the hard point is on the map, the spawns are going to spawn in correlation to the position of that hard point. On shipment, on the middle hard point, they spawn on corners and flips. There's four corners that they're going to spawn on, most likely, and then there's two flips on each container. There's one on each side, right? So if your team sets up all four corners and watches out for them flips, you'll be able to spawn kill in a sense for about a minute, minute and a half, right? And of course, when the hard point switches, the spawn points will switch as well to the next one and the spawns will go in different areas. Understanding the spawn locations are one of your most important assets to do within the Call of Duty scene or any FPS shooter, right? The more you can finesse a spawn, the more kills you can get, better chance of getting a nuke, right? So this is one thing I would highly recommend you do is to try to understand where you're spawning on certain locations and also the positioning of your teammates. If you position yourself basically to surround a certain spawn point, you can hold that spawn. Now for domination, for instance, if they hold A flag, you hold B flag and you keep C flag white, you can spawn trap the whole game, right? And you could spawn trap them at their flag, but you got to counter them in their spawn basically you got to like circle them in their spawn point and of course there's things you could do to use to your advantage to do these things right such as using kill streaks such as a wilson or juggernaut sentry guns and many other things in between but then were some of the things i would highly recommend now when it comes to playing these maps one thing i would recommend you do is that you understand how to stay level with a character's silhouette. The reason why I say this is when you get in positions to where you're shooting through a wall or you angle yourself up to get a nice angle cross map, if you know the positioning of the character's silhouette in the game, you will be able to finesse some really cheesy kills on the enemies. For instance, we're going to use the mid crate on shipment. You can shoot through B crate to container on one side of it. You can hold three angles from this middle crate, but you have to understand the positioning of the character's silhouette. Because the majority of the time, we've all seen it, mid-map people can lay down, right? If you're looking at your mini-map in the top left corner of your screen and you get a read that someone is pushing toward middle, left, or far right, you can either pre-fire them through mid-crate wall or... You can throw a smoke down. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do these. And, of course, what we're going to do here in a moment is I'm going to actually break down some of the gameplay that I've gotten over the past week. And I'm going to basically explain to you guys what I'm doing in these scenarios to where you can get a little bit of an understanding on how to finesse. That's, that's basically what we're doing. We're just finessing, right? to either get kill streaks or get better at the game or even just get a better KD. It's different for everybody, but there's a lot of things you can do. So let's go ahead and get into that. We're going to attempt to get our Wilson. If we can get an advanced UAV, that right there is just going to give us the, the DNA bomb. Because what we're going to do is we're going to drop the advance, go back into our spawn, get in a pretty safe spot, and just let the Wilson do all the work. Now with the Wilson and Juggernaut, if you rush the spawns pretty far, you will flip them in domination. It it just happens, right? Um, But other than that, you know, we're just going to see how it happens, right? And of course, after we do this in hardcore, we're going to go do this in core as well, to where I can give you guys an idea on how the killstreaks kind of operate. But when you're playing hardcore, things like the Wilson and the Juggernaut are literally the most broken of things you could use in the entire game mode, because you just shred. You shred through the enemy, especially with the Wilson. You could run people over, just you name it. Okay, so I got a lot of people joining me right now. That's fine. I got everyone muted since we're recording this video live. So what we're going to do right off the rip, we're going to try to go left side, but there's a chance I might get pre-fired off of it. So hopefully we're able to get them before they get us. Never mind. They got me before I was able to get to them. So we're going to just throw a smoke on mid. Go this way. Never mind. Our objective is to attempt to get 
a UAV right off the rip. So we smoked him in, kill one, kill another. There's one here. Okay. So there seem to be some pretty decent players on the other team. I just don't want them to have mid-map control, but of course they got it because my teammates ain't really pushed up like they're supposed to. All right, so we're going to switch up and use the bow. It's going to be one of these games where they're just going to run through my teammates like crazy. Got one. All right. So this guy was laying down. Kill him. B side. Got one right there. More shots coming from this guy right here. Going to throw a smoke there. Free throw nade here. Just lay down right here. Wait a few seconds. Three, two, one. Get a read on the minimap. Left side. Kill one. Lay down right here. Two, one. All right. We almost had a Wilson. But we do got a UAV so we can get some reads. Throw a smoke here. Okay, so he pushed our spawn. He's right side our spawn. Got him. Got that person. Get a read right there. There's two people here. This is going to be a little tough. Teammates don't really know what they're doing. Got one. Got two. Going to lay down right here for a moment. Get a read on the map. They're behind us. Go back right here. Gonna be right here. Never mind, they're, they're behind me. Just gonna wait right here. Got one right there. And he's in a corner. <laughs> That's fine. So these guys are playing pretty campy now. It's pretty unfortunate. He's right side right here. Me and teammate kind of got the same idea. There's a guy laying down to the end of the hallway. Got one. Got two. We're going to bait the teammate out on this one. Spawn's dead flip just now. So we're going to ADS at Alpha. Kill one. Kill another. Going to go prone right here. Catch that guy off guard. Jump around this corner. Go prone. Free throw nade right there. Lay down right here. Kill one. We almost got a Wilson. We're going to throw a smoke there and just lay down right here. Two. One. They're in this corner on A. Free fire this. Got one. We almost got a Wilson. I believe we're one kill off. We're just going to play a little ratty for it real fast. Got one. Two. One. Zero. Just going to smoke this out. Then we're going to rotate back toward our spawn. Now since we're in our... Oh, well, now since we're in our spawn... This is where the Wilson does the work, right? Now, we don't want to push spawns, but we want to make it to where we're able to be in mid-map, basically, like, the whole time. Because right now, they're spawning on me in the spawn, so we just got to go back this way. Almost got an advanced UAV. Simply just go like this. Awesome. Got an advance. And they're already destroying my Wilson. Looks like I'm still alive. In a sense. So that's pretty cool. They're capturing Alpha. So as you can see, they're spawning in front of me. I do got another Wilson. Well, almost got another Wilson. There's a guy right next to me. Monk. So it says we're on a 10 kill streak. I'm trying to get out of here. Got another Wilson. Got another advanced. Okay, so since we got the advanced up. We're going to throw smokes and use them to our advantage. I don't know why I do turned around like that. Right, there we go. We got the DNA bomb. Pretty easy little method on hardcore, since you're just going to be pre-firing corners and stuff. Um, but it is what it is. The Wilson is pretty broken, like I said. And as you see, we got another Wilson to work with.
All right, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. I've been trying to get the new uh, DNA bomb in core for a little while. My, my brain, my brain is fried. It, it, it's, it's cooked. Hard point. Should have had like six of them, man. It's just what, what was it supposed to happen? Happen, you know? Died by my kill streaks. Oh man, kill. Brain got fried, bro. Jesus Christ. Trying so hard to stay alive. I'm fighting for my life, man. There's a guy right above me. Right, so we're just gonna get the hell out of here. Get a reload. Should probably be someone around here. Could not be anyone around here. I don't know. We're gonna go for a flank in their spawn. Most likely. Cause we get this flank off, we should be chilling, bro. Yeah, I caused spawns to flip. So this is gonna be the, one of the hardest pushes right here. Never mind, it's actually reloading. pretty simple. Just, we're just gonna wait right here for them to come to green doors. There's gonna be a bunch of them. So we're just gonna watch this route. Cause as you see, this guy is the guy we're watching. He's probably gonna die once he goes mid map right around here. Yeah, he's getting shot right there. Evil died. That guy died. Okay, so the guy got got knocked down. We're just gonna wait right here. Dude's rotating. Just watch this flank. Wait a few seconds. I believe that's the only person that was going to attempt to do that flank. So we're gonna try to go mid guys right here. Try to go right side, see if we can get a pick off. Probably won't be able to. Yeah, we got one. We got two. We got a retail. Okay, we should be chilling. I'm gonna relocate a little bit back toward our spawn. That VTOL should at least get one or two kills. Okay, try to get a play for how we're gonna do this. Got a chopper. I'm gonna wait right here for a moment. Oh, this guy's probably gonna outplay me. Got my teammate. Did not get me though. Okay. So we're going to drop the chopper. Now this should be the game that we actually nuke. Since we're really far away. But of course what can't go wrong will probably go wrong. So we're gonna focus on this area first and then move in toward their spawn right there. We should be getting another VTOL here in a moment, since we are still alive. Oh, I thought I had a rocket still, I don't. Yeah, they're trapped on that one side of the map pretty well. There should be a killer two off another VTOL. It says we're on a 13 kill streak, but we're chilling. Alright, 
so we got another VTOL up. I'm gonna drop it like right here. I'm gonna rotate back toward the spawn. Ooh, ooh, why am I lagging? Alright, there we go. So we got the DNA bomb. It's like every two kills with your kill streaks, it'll count toward a DNA. That was pretty difficult, not gonna lie. Um, did struggle a bunch. But we did persevere and we did get it. So we're just gonna chill right here. Sweet. So we're just going to try to get a flawless gameplay here. Really, really stupid spot for me to land, but we already got the nuke, so we're just going to focus on getting kills now. to get her team ahead. I'm gonna smoke out this next objective and use these goggles again to shoot people through the smoke. Sticky. We'll throw that there. We're gonna try to get another VTOL. So we got two deaths so far. 44 KD. Should be able to finesse this objective right here. Didn't even realize Ruffy System did that. Throw that Target right there. I just want to drop another uh, tower. Should we get a crazy multi kill right there? Okay, so we got double.
And we won our team to game. And the game at 121 kills, three deaths. So the cycling of the kill streaks in core can be pretty toxic. It matters about what maps you play, of course. Certain kill streaks work better on other maps, while others don't really work so well. Um, if you're, <laughs> he's a GD mop. Steven Austin. GG's though. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, pretty toxic, but if you don't really use the advanced UAV, that's totally fine if you don't. You can still use other things and get it done. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, Core is a little bit of a headache, I'd be honest with you. Uh, should have had it a bunch of times, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong in Core that can cost you your kill streak, and it's just so unfortunate. All right, so now since we've gotten a little bit of live commentary with live gameplay out of the way, one thing I really wanted you to focus on is the way I maneuvered around the map. I picked certain gunfights I could win one-on-one -on -one rather than running into areas to where I just die instantly. Um, again, with hardcore and core, hardcore you're more likely to get a DNA bomb because how broken the kill streaks can in fact be. In core, the things that are really going to hinder you are your connection, hit reg, skill based matchmaking, randomness things that can happen, your kill streaks can kill you. Um, just there's just a lot of things that can happen in both hardcore and core. Now in this segment, what we're going to focus on is how to improve your action accuracy, right? There's a lot of different ways you can improve on it from aim training and private match shooting against bots to actually getting something in the middle of your screen as a crosshair. Now with a lot of monitors, you will have a setting to where you can actually get a HUD display of a centered icon. I use one, it kind of looks like a Destiny RPG for my Acer monitor, but if you're not using a monitor and you're using a PC, I'm going to go through a few things you can do to actually make the center of your screen look nice. Um, first things first, what we're going to do is, let me find a bottle cap, right? I got one sitting on the floor from a water bottle. So, you get a bottle cap, and you get a pair of scissors, right? This is for the people that don't really have a centering for their cross, excuse me, for their crosshair. So you're gonna take the bottle cap and you're either going to do a Y or a plus with the bottle cap. Bottle cap is pretty translucent as you can see. It's not that translucent, but if you can make some really, really thin slits, that's totally fine. And if you have some scotch tape at home, what we're going to do is we're going to aim down and hold our breath with a sniper rifle. It's always going to be centered. You're going to put this with scotch tape in the center of your screen, right? To where you have a center point to where your aim is in fact going to be. When I tell you this does help, it does. I used to do it back in the day for Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 2, Ghost. So I, I did this in the past and it did help. So let me go ahead and show you how to do this. So you take your scissors and you, you just cut off the outer part of the bottle cap, right? To where you have that circle in the middle. Now it does not have to be perfect. You just got to get just enough to where you can... Oh yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a mess to clean up. So I'm just going to probably cut a hexagon out on this. Just like so, a little hexagon. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to cut into it, probably from uh, three of the angles on the hexagon, and we're going to cut a little bit to the right into the center. These scissors suck. Just like so. Then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, right? Now you got a little piece that's hanging up, right? You can barely see it. You're going to need three of these. So you're going to go to the opposite angle right here, and you're going to do the same thing. Cut in toward the center. And it can get a little difficult since the pieces of this can be a little crazy. Then you're going to do it one more time. This can be a little difficult, but of course this is the bottle cap, so don't just worry about it. Okay, so we got our three pieces cut. Now we got to get rid of the center pieces. You can, if you cut through all the way, you can twist them off, or you can just go in and cut them through. So let me go ahead and finish this little cut right here. Okay, so that seems to be all the way through. And you could just twist. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't try to twist it. I'll try to cut it off. Because your cuts, matters about what scissors you got. My scissors sucks. So I'm going to try to cut through it real quick. Oh yeah, so you'll just do these scissors. Or, I messed these scissors up. Okay, so I cut one end off. You're just gonna fold your tips inward, just like so, to where you can get a cut on the really big piece. And you're just gonna go through with your scissors and just level it out to where you don't cut the little pieces off. 
This one didn't cut through all the way right here. So we're gonna go a little further in with the scissors. Okay, okay, sweet. So after that DIY project, you're left with something that looks like this. It doesn't look the best, don't get me wrong. It looks kind of weird, but it kind of looks like mine in a sense. Now what you could do with this is you could take a black Sharpie, right? So we put that down. You take a, a black Sharpie and of course let this dry when you're done to where you don't get Sharpie all over your fingers. But if you do, it's fine. You'll be okay. All right, so now this is what we're looking like, right? Got a black Sharpie. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some scotch tape and you're going to aim down in the center of your screen in firing range or in private match or something. You're gonna put the scotch tape on top of here, right? Then you're going to center it in the center of your screen, right? Because you made a Y, your center point is going to be that little dot on this. Put it right there in the center of your screen. And now you got a center point on where your aim is in fact going to be. And all you're gonna have to do is center that onto people until you either upgrade or, you know, get a monitor or something, right? That's one method you could do. Another thing you could do is string. Um, I also did this as well. It's a little inconsistent, but it does work. So you get some twine. Um, I actually have some sitting over here, I believe. So you'll get some twine. Um, it can be a little distracting. So instead of twine, you can use fishing line. Um, and what you do is the same thing with scotch tape. You find the center of your screen there, long ways, and then horizontal or vertical, I don't know. Then you go the other direction, tape it off on the edges of your monitor, and now you got a center focal point. This one can be a little bit distracting since, you know, you got a lot of things going on on your screen and stuff. Um, and then another thing you could do, similar to with the scotch tape, you can do, um, so on your mini map, um, I'm probably going to put it up on the screen somewhere to show you. Your character cursor is a circle with a triangle on it. You can get some pencil lead, right, break it down, and you could put it to the edge of your mini map. And basically, this is how I trained to look at my mini map and, you know, shoot, because I do that like 80% of the time. So when you're playing the game, like I did state earlier, if you can center your aim to be level with the character's silhouette in game, to where when you look at your mini map and you're getting the reads like on your advanced UV or UEV, that there's gonna be someone there. If you know you can shoot through a wall or if you know you could pre-fire a corner and still be leveled in the center of your screen while looking at your mini map, using pencil lead can in fact let you do that. Pencil lead or fishing string, one of the two since they're very thin. And of course, once you do this, you get used to it, then you won't even need to use any of that. That's one thing I would in fact recommend to do because it does in fact help a lot. And of course, it gives you more sense of awareness. So that's some things I would do if I were you for accuracy and centering and everything like that. All right, so now since we got that out of the way to help improve the minimap and also accuracy, awareness, and improvements, what we're going to focus on now is probably one of the most important things you will ever learn from this video. If you are a novice player, mid-tier, to almost really good or decent player, this is something that's going to improve the quality of your gameplay tenfold. You are going to have to understand that when you play, you're gonna have to understand when you play against better players, how they know that you're coming from a certain direction and you call them a cheater for it or this or that, it comes with experience, right? And Call of Duty has given them a tool to work with to predict where you could possibly be. Now, of course, when you play these maps over and over again, you tend to understand routes. And with these routes, you can play a prediction on if someone could or could not be there. Now, if you play these maps on and on, you will in fact be able to predict where people will in fact be at, at certain times, with or without a UAV, with no footstep audio or anything, based off of timing. Now, whenever you're killed in Call of Duty, there is a second window where it shows the person who killed you, the direction of which where the person killed you, and where that person is moving right? We've all seen this. If you've played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, I believe Cold War, and a lot of other newer gen Call of Duties, they in implemented this. It's to help you understand that person's route, right? If you're able to predict where this person is going, you will be able to spawn and predict or try to anti them. Well, I'm going to be showing you something on both ends to where you can anti them on both the offense and defense side. You see, whenever I kill somebody, I will try to 
punt fake them. I will purposely go in a direction which that I will not go on my original route. The reason why is they will see that visual cue to where I travel in that direction. Then they will try to go in that direction if they're in the game enough to attempt to do so. But after that one second is over and I travel that way, I will either double back or go a different direction. Because almost nine times out of 10, that person who shoots and kills you will in fact try to counter that one second the game gives them on the other end to predict where they're headed to. Now, it's it's a little weird to explain, but I know if you've played the game for some time and you've invested some time in it, you're able to understand this, right? That right there is one of the most important pieces of information you can receive. If you combine that with spawn knowledge while also understanding teammate placement, which it's very easy to understand because they made it very easy with where you can pull up the mini map and also visually see where your teammates are on the map, you can in fact predict spawns very, very well. Now, of course, doing this does in fact take a lot of time because you are putting a lot of information on the table when it comes to playing. Now, a lot of people just casually play the game, right? People just casually play it and you know, these are the people that just enjoy the game for how it is. People such as myself who've played within this franchise for a long time, we tend to notice this throughout the years. And you can use it to your advantage. And basically that one second that is given, you can outplay so many people with that. And honestly, when you're playing, try to pay attention to it, right? Try to pay attention to where when you shoot somebody, right? And you shoot them from one direction, purposely run for a second in an opposite direction and then set up at a different area or different scenario or whatever you want to call it in a different spot and see if that person you just killed doesn't try to come from that direction and i bet you they will they always will right if they are cognitive enough to or even in the game enough to attempt to do so it's that's how it works. And also vice versa. If you see that somebody, you know, let's say you die by somebody and you see that one second, you see them traveling, let's say they're mid map and you see them traveling left side. When you spawn in and let's say that person on the kill streak or something, and you could tell that they're pretty much in really, really good player or a decent player. The way to anti them is very simple. You see, when someone is rotating and doing all these things, especially when they're killing people, the best way to anti somebody is not to rush them or anything like that. It's to play patiently, right? Because if you set up an angle or a spot or something like that, eventually within that route or where they double back and go to their original route, you will be able to kill them. That always happens. So if you can do that, you, you will you will be doing really well. Also, another thing, if you're learning to get better at the game and other things like that, using your teammates as a visual read is the most important thing you could do because it tells you if there's enemies nearby, it tells you if there's any equipment or anything present. A lot of people don't really like doing this where they bait their teammates out, but if your main objective is to get a nuke or is to get a high KD or anything else like that, using your fellow teammates or friends as, you know, bait is good, right? It it just it is just what it is. It's been like this for years as long as you're able to communicate or not even communicate as long as you're able to get the read, that's all that matters. Okay. 93 ping. This this game makes no sense. Why am I on this high of a ping, dude? Okay, it's whatever. All right, so we're going to attempt. So I killed him. He seen me rotating toward his spawn, which means he could spawn around this spawn point right here. Which means someone could spawn all around right here. Need recon overhead. HQ is online. Free throw nade right there toward the hard point or the headquarters. The enemy captured the headquarters. Right so I'm gonna hold this angle right here since we did get a read on someone on the left side. Dude, this lazy and long is crazy. He's right there. Got him. And there's one guy left. He's on the objective. Gonna bait my teammates out because he's right here on the mini map. So we're gonna wait right here. Okay, so teammates got him. They're going to spawn around this area. They spawn to the left right up here. Right. Then what we're going to do now is set up a sentry gun. We're going to set the sentry gun up right here to watch this lane right here. So I'm going to smoke this out to where I don't die. 
Then we'll set it up right here to watch left and right, right? So they got spawns for the objective, so they're all right here. As you can see, my teammates are all posted up. Activate my goggles real quick to try to get a angle on someone. They're all on it. There's a guy right there. Got him. Then we're going to keep an eye on mid right here. Till teammate goes mid. Then we're Okay, so teammate's mid. Look right there. We're going to hold this angle right here since we got dead bodies in front of us as... um. As cover. So we're going to wait for teammates to push up. There's one guy left. He's on the left side of the objective. I'm going to wait right here. Since we're really close to the advanced UAV. So the guy did get killed, but there were cluster mines. Like I just said. So since I'm on a kill streak, I don't want to push the cluster mine and die. So they're going to spawn right around here. So they're going to spawn on a sentry gun. As you're about to say, I'm about to get hit markers here in a second. There goes the hit markers. There goes more hit markers. Got the advance. Now, they're all right here. In middle, right? Dude's to the left right here. He's in the corner. Okay, you guys coming mid. Gonna wait right here. Kill him. Then, we're gonna go right here. Where I just killed this guy at. We're gonna lay down in his body where it was. The reason why I'm laying down right here is because there's a lot of people right here. And this guy's waiting. He's waiting. So he's pushing. He's coming this way now. As you can see, he's on that head glitch. Here's the guy right here. He's not going to be expecting me right here. Kill him. Right? Then I'm going to push and kill this guy. Go prone. Kill them too. Then I'm going to rotate back over toward this one. I'm going to smoke that out. I'm going to pre-throw a nade right here. I'm going to go prone right here. They will not expect me right here. Watch. He's going to push in. Didn't even look to his left. But now, since he knows I'm right here, we're going to double back and wait right here on this head glitch. All right, two, one, kill that person. There's going to be another person. We're going to still wait right here. Then we're going to go prone right here in mid and watch this area right here. Kill that person, kill that person, kill that person. Got the nuke. Kill that person. Kill that person. I died. Right? So, we played that very well. Um, used teammates as bait, but also had spawn knowledge. Right? So, of course, we joined the game late. But as you've seen, them people were not challenging me. Right? Yeah, we lost this game. The GG's. Fuck it, though. We did get the nuke. Um, but just the game was already late and they were already ahead a bunch of points. It's all good. I don't want to hear the reactions are on the other team. Mission failed. Return to base. All right, so there was a breath of disappointment. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of the things um, when it comes to spawn knowledge and everything else like that from teammate placement, as you've seen me pull out the minimap and predicting where people are going to spawn at, which I did spawn there almost every single time. Um, a lot of the ways that I did play was, you know, I laid down and spawn. Uh, no, I laid down dead bodies every so often to throw people off. It's just trying to think a step ahead, right? Now, of course, it's ratty as shit, don't get me wrong, but it is a play style and people do in fact play like this. It just comes with the experience. It's just, it's like a game of chess. You're just trying to outplay people with the next move. Um, but of course, if you're a newer player, starting to learn a lot of these things, it can be a little difficult. But as you did see, I did shoot someone from one direction, rotate to a different spot. You know, it could be very subtle, but that subtle change in positioning can in fact win you a lot more things. I mean, as you've seen it, that um, wood skin that I killed, I shot him laying down in that side hallway going into mid, right? He walked right in, no problem, killed him. I rotated, but before I rotated, you seen that one second, I was still kind of laying down. 
so that he would predict that I'm still laying down around that corner, but I rotated around the wall and got on the head glitch. And because that guy wasn't locked into the game, like I explained earlier, he walked right past me going into um, the surgery room, right? So there's a lot of things you can do, but as you're trying to critique and slowly move throughout the map, it's all about finesse too. Got to think about it. Your movement can be very, very small, but still have a really huge impact on the kill streak that you're on, right? Now, when it came to winning the game, it was very difficult. The teammates I had, as you've seen, they were laying down in mid map. They were not doing anything. When it came to moving in on an objective, they were playing very casual. They were not there for the objective, if you could say, right? It happens. But yeah, that's the gameplay. Um, I really hope you guys did learn a lot from this video. I really tried putting a lot of work into it, basically explaining a lot of things to you guys. I really thought it would be cool to show live examples on how I play, on what goes through my mind, to where you guys can take some examples from it and everything like that. If you do want more content like this, I know this was a little bit of a mixture of gameplay and informational stuff. I know a lot of people like one of the other. I figured I'd just try to mix it together and over deliver. That's one thing I've learned with making YouTube videos is the more you over deliver, the more likely that people are going to want to watch your content. Um, so I, I tried that with this video as well. So if you did find anything positive from this video, by all means, please like the video. It does help the algorithm out with showing this out to more people. But also, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I really do enjoy making videos like this to where I can help improve the quality of your gameplay. If you have any questions, regardless of whatever they are, I will drop my Activision down below, as well as with my Discord name, with my Discord link and you guys could join my community, ask me questions or anything like that if you want me to mentor you real quick on some things that you're having some issues with, by all means, just let me know. I will do the best of my ability to help you. I do want to host private match um, coaching sessions. I think that'd be pretty cool, right? To help you guys out, but that does take time and who knows, right? But with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys stopping by. It really does mean a lot. It has been sweaty and I really hope the information you've learned from today's video does in fact make you a better player. With that being said, I will catch you guys on the flip and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Sweaty mop on the grind, never stopping, clean up the game, flow straight popping, wiping up the mess, ain't no need to stress, sweating for success, always at your best, sweaty mop, you're the one who's making moves, leaving beats so fresh, setting up the grooves, from the bottom to the top, you climb non-stop, determined and focused, your energy can't flop, you soak up challenges like a mop, in a spill, turn the obstacles into thrills, showcasing skills, your rhythms and rhymes, they always intertwine, like cleaning up a mess, you make the flow shine, your verses hit hard like a mop on the floor, dropping wisdom and truth, leaving heads explore sweaty mop you're unique your style is refined your rap game strong leaving others behind so here's to you sweaty mop in the rap scene your hustle and grind forever supreme your mop the game clean no need to stop your legacy carved deep yeah that's sweaty mop hit that sub button fool